Welcome to Zoo Adventures! How cool is this? It is early in the morning here today, but we got a really cool experience. We're going to see the morning routine on the Watani grasslands. We're going to go through that gate over there. We're going to meet Keeper Stacy. I think Keeper Lane's going to be part of this as well. We're going to go meet the rhinos. Oh my gosh. Awesome. Uh, we're going to go see some of the really cool barns. And then we're going out on habitat and we're going to count the animals this morning, part of the Watani grasslands so routine. We, so we basically get to be a keeper for the morning without getting dirty. Without getting dirty, having to do anything. No, but do remember, this is taped, remember? So when, because we're going a lot of really cool locations, at least I think we are. So bear with us, but ask those questions because Wendy and I are right there with you and a couple of our friends too. So let's go see what's going on. So Stacy, where are we going right now? We are like really behind the scenes right here. Yes, we are entering one of our African antelope barns. Oh, okay. So we call it a hoofstock barn. Uh, that makes sense. Hoofstock barn one. There are three of them all together. But so who kind of hangs out here? So currently, uh, two of our African antelope species oh, no are living in this barn, uh, but all of the barns, uh, all seven species. Uh, we have seven different species of African antelope here okay. at the North Carolina Zoo. Cool. And we're going to see those later on, right? Yes. Yes. That's so exciting. Go we'll check things out. So this is first thing in the morning. We right. just pulled in, um, grabbed our radios, and so we're cool. going to check on our African antelope and give them, give them some grain. So, of course, uh, this is a very exciting time for them. Everybody loves, <laughs> loves breakfast. Look what we're seeing. Who's looking? Oh, yeah. Everybody I like that. Stacy says everybody loves breakfast. Looks like the bongo is ready. Yeah. Oh, what's this? Is this, is this breakfast? Yeah, so this is breakfast. Um, and it's just uh, a pellet that we give them. They also eat grass and leaves sure. and lots of hay but we give this to them first thing in the morning, just like, uh, you know, if you have horses or goats, they get a grain. Okay. Um, or even you can compare it to like a dog kibble. So this is kind of like some of the nutrients, some of the, and they kind of keep it full. Yeah, it gives them their uh, vitamins and minerals. Okay. Um, and anything that they might be missing out on. Sure. Um, Through the grasses and the brows and stuff like that. So much fun. Oh, wait, we're getting lost. There's a lot of switches and toggles. <laughs> yeah, there's a door. Okay. So, if you guys just want to come right on in. Oh, my goodness. So, again, we're behind behind the scenes. Hi. We're nice, I promise. So, these are our two Eastern Mountain Bongo. Uh, you have mimosa and mojito. I'm they literally are... giddy right now. She, <laughs> she is, and she's giddy. she's waving. Wendy is waving to the bongo. I love so much. They're really cool. They are uh, they are critically endangered and yes. very elusive uh, in their wild habitat, but uh, in human care, they're very comfortable with us and uh, pretty, camp, pretty calm yeah and they actually enjoy scratches on the horns and ears which makes them very personable and, oh, neat. and easy to connect with yep and these are two females yes so these are two uh, and they are uh, half sisters okay so they have the same dad um, and different moms okay so we'll let you do your thing so I've got my bucket of green Should we follow you? Yeah, you guys can. Just want to make sure that we're all doing the right thing. They should still come out. Hi. Hi. Hi, Bongo. I'm so giddy. Hi, this is crazy cool. I come on, Bongo. With Bongo. And then you've got oh, gosh. Uh, the other species. Oh, wow. Adra, <laughs> too? Yeah. These are Adra gazelle, uh, or also known as Donna. OK. And they are also two females. I don't know if they're sisters or not. I would have to look that up in uh, the stud book, but uh, they Boy. are best buds. So this is the closest I've ever been to them. Yeah. This is amazing. Now guys, the bongo, we did, they are on habitat. You can see them from the Zufari sometimes, oh but they are not 
easily seen out there sometimes. Yeah, they're usually out on that fence line or in yeah. the trees. Yeah, so this is an awesome view of the bongo. So thanks to Keeper Stacy on that one. Remember, we're, li we're not live, we're taped to give you these amazing shots today. But we're answering your questions, poking her head out there. Hi. We're on there answering questions. So if you have any, please shout out a question or two for us. They are just gorgeous. They are so pretty. And the, again, they are seen, they are on habitat, but they're so good at hiding. They're so elusive. This is, Stacy, this is an amazing opportunity to see these incredible animals. So is thank it, you so much. Yeah, like Steve's saying, they are a, they're the largest forest dwelling antelope. Mm -hmm. And so their natural habitat is the trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thick wooded areas and, um, on our 40 acre Watani grasslands habitat, we're able to give them that yep. natural habitat, that wooded areas. Um, and of course they choose, <laughs> they choose to be <laughs> there. They choose to be there, that's what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And then and the Adra gazelle, yep. uh, the white ones, they are always out in the open. Um, so yes. you can almost always see them out on habitat. They are a desert species. What can I say? Mm -hmm. And we actually poured them uh, some sand. We made them a big sand. Oh, did you? Oh, big cool. sand pit. Cause, we'll you know, see that later desert. on, huh? Yeah. And uh, they took right to it and they laid it all the time. Nice. So. And guys, these, these guys are not little. These bongo are not small. Yeah. They're probably four feet at the shoulder, maybe three and a half, four feet at the shoulder. They're not little animals and they just disappear into the forest and habitat they live in. That really cool color, that kind of reddish color and the stripes break up that entire outline so they can hide that much better in their wild habitat and here at the zoo. It's kind of cool we can see the three different barns from here. Yes. Oh, good spot. And all of these go out to the big habitat that we'll be going out to. They have gates that go out to Yes, there. so whenever you're on a Zufari mm -hmm. tour, uh, if you come, uh, sometimes your uh, a tour guide will kind of point it out to you, yes. but there are some gates, like hoofstock gates is what we call them, sure. and that's uh, they lead into these three barns. And we use these barns... Uh, most of the time, our animals are never locked in the barns. They always just have access to come to and, and go. And it's mainly for our winter months. Oh, sure. That makes sense. So we, they have these big, beautiful barns, and we throw down lots and lots of bedding. Mm -hmm. And it has heated floors. And so the heated floors heat up the shavings and the straw sure. and keep everybody toasty. <laughs> got to be, gotta have a toasty yeah. morning. So in the winter months, when we walk into these barns, you'll find you know, groups of antelope oh, that okay. have bedded down and, and staying warm. Because this is that little break time. Yeah, so, and... From the weather. Mm -hmm. But it is our holding areas. We even have lots of uh, large grassy... There sure is. Large grassy areas for them to eat and trees. Yeah, Wendy's showing everybody that now. It is yeah. really big back here. I mean, these are... And this is just one yard, so just that's one. That's amazing. And then, so, as we mentioned earlier in our introduction, this is kind of about... The morning routine at Watani Grasslands because yep. there's so much going on. Mm -hmm. So just so you guys know, just to give you guys an idea of time, uh, it's about 7.30, 7.40, somewhere in there. So they come in and they get their morning breakfast and you get a little bit of an eye on them. I assume that's pretty important too yes. to kind of get a look at them. You want to check on check on everybody and, and make sure they're okay. Yeah, and they look pretty good. Yeah, they look good. <laughs> now, what? If, as Wendy mentioned, we have the three barns, mm -hmm. this we'll call this, you said this is one, this is Hostock Barn 1. Yep. Are two and three different in any way? Nope, they're pretty much exactly the okay. same. Um, kind of serve the same purpose for opportunities for them to come to get, kind of come yep. up and get out, okay. And they tend to, it's funny, the antelope uh, one and three are their favorite. Oh, really? Yeah, two is uh, used uh, scarcely. Is. I don't That's know. Interesting. We started to, we're trying to brainstorm of why. On the I mean, edges, they still maybe? use it, but you can tell that they use one and three a lot more. Um, I wonder if it's on the edges, kind yeah, of, kind of habitat edges, sort of. <laughs> I, I don't know. God, but they yes. are so cute. But yeah, they serve the, the same purpose. So, okay. uh, Anna, uh, my team member, mm -hmm. she went to yeah, the we other met her barns. earlier today. Yeah, and so she poured grain in the bowls. Um, but yeah, so we just, them cool. and pour their grain in the bowls and they're free to to come up and and get their breakfast 
And this is really behind the scenes. This isn't a place that we that our guests get to come to. No, and a lot of times it's even you know even VIP. It's hard for them to to come into the sure. barn with with the animals. So did you hear that, guys? This is really cool. <laughs> Look at them just staring at us. I know. I can't stop staring back at them. And it's neat because they are. I mean, they're really calm. They see that, and then. They haven't met Wendy and I before. They haven't met Wendy and me before. Um, we may have been seeing them from the Zufari experience, but they don't know who we are. And they're really calm. And I think that probably, a lot of that has to do with the care you guys give. You guys have, have, may have given them an opportunity to relax and to be comfortable and understand this is a yeah, safe they place. Ha and they know they have the choice. And they have enough space. Yeah. Because you can see one of our Adra is not as comfortable. No, yeah. And so she just went on down. And so they have enough space to get away from us mm -hmm. or you know get some distance between us and them if they want to if they want it yeah and so they know if you know we started being weird so we started walking towards walk. them there's <laughs> that they get to that distance i think it's what's called a fight or flight distance is yep. that kind of what that mm -hmm. phrase is fight or flight so we'd get a little too close and then they would either come at us or they would go the other direction yes yeah, let's, let's not push that. Not come let's not at push us. that. <laughs> no, what these guys got on their usually, head. <laughs> antelope is typically antelope are typically flight. Yes. Uh, so too. they are a prey. They are <laughs> prey animals by nature, and so they're typically right. going to run. Not to say that if you corner any. Sure. That's any when of they get them, a little nervous. Yeah. Then they do have those horns. A lot of. Um, they sure do, man. A lot of species have very large horns and can defend themselves. Awesome. Well, this was a treat. It, sure. Well, I wasn't expecting this. This is amazing. As we mentioned so many times, guys, this is really cool experiences um, for Wendy and for me as well. So, Keeper Stacy, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity and then showing our guests as well this amazing space. And I guess you have some more stuff planned for us? Well, yeah, we uh, have to finish doing our morning checks and okay. breakfast. All right. So, we'll go feed and Wendy? check on some more animals. Ready for morning breakfast? I'll, I'll be here. Wendy, Wendy, no. You guys, Wendy, yeah, you guys Wendy, will be really Wendy, excited. Wendy, come on, Wendy. How about the next family, too? Look at this. Oh. Oh, Hi. look over there. Hi. Mama. I didn't even see that. There's a baby. <laughs> That's a little one over there. Hi, Mama. So this is. Yes, this is Kit and Magoo. Kit and Magoo. Do you guys remember when we talked, when we saw Kit and Magoo last time? Wow. They're get, she's getting big. She's getting very big. Hi, Mama. Hi, Kit. Magoo, honey, good morning. <laughs> Magoo's like, yeah, whatever. She's like, yeah, she's in the morning. She, 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 she <laughs> around the like, time I'm, it is. Steve still... was very unhappy that I made him come in at 7 today. I, yeah, she was like, you know, we got to be there at 7. I'm like, no, we, we, do we, we have to be there. How about you be there at 7? She said, no. Oh, I heard a squeak. I heard a squeak. And then we can see. So then we also have Linda and Jojo. Hi, Mgoo. And this is Linda and Jojo? Yes. Remember when we got to tell everybody Jojo's name? That was so cool. Good morning. And hi, Jojo. Hi. Good morning. Good morning, Jojo. Good morning. So they're both pushing two months old now? Uh, so Jojo was born February 24th. Oh my gosh, that's March. I'm thinking, so you know what? Five, Jojo is like five, is five months. Wow. And Magoo, that makes her like six months. -ish. So five and six months old. And this is, this is Jojo and Linda. Mm -hmm. So Linda coming up now. There's Linda mom. The amazing horns on these guys. Yeah, the clearance. You can, for the camera is a lot more when that horn's involved. <laughs> yeah. So Wendy's trying to get you some close-up shots, but she needs to watch Kit on the left. <laughs> so many things to keep an eye on in here. Magoo's like, oh, I didn't, I didn't realize that we had visitors. <laughs> Hi, Magoo. Magoo. Is that food? That is so cool. So Magoo's six months old. That's who you're looking at right now with Wendy. Kit is Magoo's mom. Yes. You get a good look at why they have the wide. Wide, mouth. yeah. That's remember the name. They're white rhinos, southern white rhinos, but there was nothing white about them, as we talked about before. It's all about the name and a misunderstanding. The name white is a mis a misunderstanding of a word for wide, 
and they get their name from those wide lips. She really likes the camera. <laughs> she is very, she's a camera hog, actually. Are you kidding me? Hello! Oh, hello! And now we come to Linda Hall. Linda's like, who's talking? Yeah, Linda's like, what is going on this morning? I know. Okay, Mama. Hi. Hi, Kit. Hi. Everything's good. You got food. We just have a camera. Hanging out this morning. Is that like a, a, the baby's interested or...? Nervous or? Uh, I think it, it's not. I'm nervous whenever they. <laughs> Kit, I don't have anything for you. <laughs> Kit, Mom's <you're> begging. begging. <laughs> um, whenever they are calling like nervous, it'll be a more of a quick like a yip yip like um they start calling them all. That's like a. How you talking. Doing? Hey, yeah, how you doing? Just talking. Uh, they do that a lot whenever they're nursing, getting ready to nurse. Okay, so it's more of a comfort thing. Yeah, so they're like happy, like. Cooing. It's kind of like a coo, maybe. So you need to get Kit begging a little bit. Here. I know. She's like, okay. It's just hay. You have hay. So most people at home have a, a dog or something uh, that's uh, begging uh, for uh, food. You know, a, a golden retriever. <laughs> Stacy has a five thousand pound rhino. <laughs> Hi. Oh, you get that. You get that. You yeah, get that. Yeah. So when we walked in, she had this tub perfectly stacked. Uh, on the water tub. Really? Yeah. So, she so this is part of your morning routine again. Come down and check on everybody and make sure everybody's doing okay. And Yeah, so we come, uh, come down. Anna, has. we have another barn uh, with a few other rhinos. And then we also have to uh, walk up the hill and, and check on four more rhinos because we have ten rhinos wow. here. So that's a lot of rhinos. Yeah, and, it uh, is. So we'll pour our grain to our antelope and, and get them their breakfast. Okay. And then we come and check on all of our rhinos first thing. Nice. And so I just tossed um, Kit and Magoo a flake mm -hmm. of Timothy, uh, uh, Timothy hay, and I'm going to refill their waters. Okay, I think Wendy's having a little too much fun over there. <laughs> yeah, so like, let's let Wendy get what she's getting. She's over there. <laughs> she's over there with JoJo. Our baby rhinos are very social. They sure are. So one amazing thing about rhinos um, is just how social they are with, with people. Um, so they do enjoy the interaction mm -hmm. uh, with us keepers and visitors yep. um, as well. They don't have to fear too much being, you know, 4,500 mm -hmm. pounds. Big old beasties. Yeah, they're very <laughs> and so, but they also really enjoy, uh, they're very tactile, so they enjoy oh, they are. Uh, being scratched and rubbed on. Has, and that, has that been hard with COVID, not being able to yeah. interact as much? Because I know we're sort of a little bit more hands-off. Yeah, we are more hands-off, and we always... Is that um, why the gloves? Yes, yeah, so, so I have gloves um, and a mask on. But of course, the rhinos have no idea <laughs> um, that it is, that that's what we're doing at the moment, what's going on. So they don't understand. And Kit here, she is um, extra, extra social. Yes, she is. <laughs> she really loves. The beautiful um, eyes. She loves treats. And then they also they like their foreheads. Um, but yeah, you can see just her size. I'm not a very big person. Um, but still, her Steve, head is. Well, they know looks, that I am. Steve yeah. looks small. I mean, I'll come size. over here. Yeah, so you can see. Hi, Kit. This is just her head, so. Right? Um, That's amazing. And then these are, there's actually five different species of rhinos, which I know we've talked about mm -hmm. um, before. And this, but these guys, they are southern white rhinos. Yeah. And like they were telling you, the wide, the wide lips is kind of what makes them unique. Amazing. <laughs> and here we get, or again, it's oh, something. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Wendy and I have been able to talk about this a lot. It's something for Wendy. And for me, you can't take this for granted. Yeah. No, no. Being able to be this close, guys, yeah. for our digital guests, I mean, this is amazing. And to be able to bring these kind of shots to you, yes, it'd be awesome to bring all 12,000 of you here, but obviously that's impossible. She's this, like, it's my cool. turn. It's my turn. It's baby. like, just keep feeding me. 
She hasn't realized because uh, typically <laughs> we give them treats um, from like if we're given from our hands. But oh, this okay. is only Timothy Hay. But of course, it's better. I, apparently, it's better for my. No, you can't. <laughs> yeah, so the baby rhinos, they like to uh, grab a hold of the hose and run off with it. Nice. I worked so we with, were, uh, my ocelot that I worked with for years liked to take it and then poke holes in it. So. Yes. Yeah. What do you want to say? <laughs> oh, I love taking the, taking the hose. I think it's funny they run off with it. Uh, yeah, and they, just like, you know, if a, if a dog grabs a hold of it and goes running through the yard, they're carrying it around and right. spraying everywhere. But, and these guys, the babies, um, they're really, a lot of times, they'll, they, they will sit down. Oh, look at that tail go up. I know that's a good sign. <laughs> they'll kind of sit, when that tail sit goes like a dog. Up. Yeah. So, and then you just rub their <laughs> Going down. Not like you're saying. Not like not like he, not like she likes that at all no. or anything. <laughs> but yeah, they're pretty. It's hard to keep standing when somebody's scratching. That's right. I guess. So they tend to just kind of fall over. Those big old ears. Good sense of hearing on these guys. <laughs> Eyesight maybe not so much. <laughs> awesome sense of touch oh, apparently. Yeah. Are you what guys? Are you, are you guys training so. with them? <laughs> yes, we are. Um, and they're doing. Fantastic, even at just five and six months old. Really? They've already entered the training program and um, they can target. And they're also teaching them to lay down uh, lay down on cue. On cue. Neat. I'm going to let Linda water and go JoJo. Sorry, Linda and JoJo. We've come over here and say hi to you two. Mgu and Kit kind of snagged us. It's the squeaking. It is. Yeah, Mgu's a little, a little bit noise, noisier. And we kind of need to be in this space. And this is the rhino barn, back one of the back areas you can, of the you barn. You can tell the security at each space. <laughs> These bars are huge. <laughs> Because you need them that big. Absolutely. For something this strong. You don't need a rhino coming through these little habitat bars. Yeah, and when they're, uh, so when they're babies, I can show you. Uh, so the horizontal, the horizontal bollards are for, it's baby proofing. Oh, nice. So just like, you know, at home, uh, human, you know, as humans, we have to baby proof our house for toddlers. Sure. There's a ton of baby proofing that takes place for Baby rhinos yes. as well. This this is baby. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. We put little plastic plugs in the wall. Seriously. This is baby rhino proofing. This is baby. What have you guys done for your houses to rhino baby proof? Maybe a baby gate on the stairs. Maybe a baby gate or two here and there. Maybe Some you move the delicate the, the delicate stuff the up. The lock on the toilet. Yep. <laughs> How many of you put five inch barriers, five inch poles? So this is Jojo. Jojo's about five months old. Yes, she right? was born February 24th. Okay. So, yeah, so, so she's a little, a little over, five. over five. A little over five months. So she's also trying to get my hand in the hole. <laughs> yes, she is. And they are working. We are um, working on the mouth behavior with them. Oh, Good look at job. that. Oh, yay. Good job. And then for these guys, they do... Um, they are eating solid food, so mm -hmm. they eat hay and grain and grass, okay. just like mom. But they're nursing quite a bit um, okay. as well. So as far as, they're not as okay. interested in treats when it comes to training. Their reinforcement is really the is just the, the rubber. Yeah, rubbing them is what you mainly. Uh, I had a I had a beluga whale that I worked with years ago that only wanted tactile. He yeah. wanted you to rub and scratch his tongue when he did a behavior correctly. His he just, tongue. He wanted you to, he would come and open his mouth and you would scratch his tongue and that was his reinforcement. And it's neat because this is part, when you guys talk about the operant conditioning and the positive reinforcement, you really have to know your animals. You've really got to know what is reinforcing. Sometimes it's food, maybe not sometimes, other, maybe sometimes it's a scratch. So the, you guys, so the keepers really have to understand their animals 
and know what's reinforcing to them. Have you, have you, can you see the two horns? Oh, his little nub. The little tiny nub. Second the secondary horn is so little. It's, that is so tiny. It's starting to grow. I remember when the first one was a little nub. I do too. Yeah. So when did we do was That was March. That was probably end of March, 1st of April, when we were here last. It was the day that JoJo was named. Yeah. We were here when JoJo was named. We're going to have to come visit again. And that if you guys amazing. are wondering how this baby proofing works, it's so that they, when they're small, so an adult rhino cannot fit through sure. this. Sure. Yeah, we've seen Linda wasn't able to get through. Um, can't, can't but, or you can see the gap a little bit better. This is how we walk through. Um, but a, a baby rhino can fit through very the easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they'll just yeah. come out into the hallway. Yeah. And we can't Does have that. Well. <laughs> Not yeah. a good thing? No, we don't want that. They are really cute, but they turn, I mean, they are incredibly powerful very young. They're so, still yeah. rhinos, right? Yeah. They're still rhinos. They yeah. can still <laughs> tackle you. So even if they're playing. just, yeah, exactly. If they're just playing or just trying to sit in your lap, which is what they would probably do. <laughs> might might um, crush a few yeah, egg bones. This is not exactly the lap dog you need, that's yeah, for exactly. sure. Yeah, exactly. No, we, we don't encourage them coming out to the hallway. <laughs> wow. Oh. JoJo just had a little Aww. squeak. This is amazing. And to think, guys, this is part of, this is a daily routine for the keepers here at Watani Grassland. Can you imagine this year every morning? No. Baby rhinos every morning. What'd you do this morning? Bongos every morning. What'd you do today? Oh, I fed a baby rhino. Now, oh, you do well. It is what's hard up with work, that? But at least with your hard oh, it's work, amazingly you get an amazing work. view. <laughs> yes, the rhinos are. Pretty incredible. Ten rhinos that they the keepers are, take care of. They are my husband's favorite animal. Are yeah, they? they are, the chubby unicorns are his favorite? Yes. They are his absolute favorite. Hey, John. Favorite. Shout out to John Shout Foley. Shout out to John Foley. <laughs> okay, so I need to go and check the other okay. four. So if you guys want The other to, four. Uh, All right, tackle. we're out of here. All right. Jeez. So we're checking on the other four. Holy cow. And this is our largest, am I right? This our is Abby. Rhino. She's our large, on the left hand side is our largest rhino. You and are a mass, and the sweetest, as Stacy says. How much does she weigh? Abby, you are Roughly. huge. Uh, she weighs about 5,500 pounds. Holy moly. So she's almost, in general, white rhinos get between 3,000 and 6,000 pounds. That's uh, the male. <laughs> I'll look at the bag in there. Oh, it's a yawn, okay. Yeah. And this is one of the this is one of the two year olds, right? Here, the baby. Yes. The baby. I just wanted to point out her second horn and how she has um that made, notch. accessorized it. Hi. Yeah, she's made just she made it just her own little mm -hmm. notch on there. They rub it on things. The horn is one of the things that you can use really well to identify who's who out here on Habitat of North Carolina Zoo. This is one of the two year olds? Yes. Do you know who that is? Uh, oh, um, she squeaked a little bit. That is Nandi. Hi, Nandi. So this is Linda's. Linda's. Uh, one of Linda's oh. babies. Actually, these two are also half sisters. So this was one of Linda's babies. Um, so wait a minute. Wait a minute. Years ago. Abby. Yeah. Abby is one of Linda's offspring. Uh huh. Nandi is one of Linda's offspring. Yes. So these are half, half sisters. sisters. Uh huh. That is amazingly cool. And then Bonnie is on. Um, you Bonnie's see, over here. You can't see Bonnie at all because Abby Abby's is completely, in the way. Completely She's clipped. Her. Um, but Bonnie is uh, Linda's granddaughter. That's amazing story. I love the genetics. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I, when Abby came over, so guys, what we we're going to do is we we're just going to kind of come up and get a, get an eye get an eye on them and then leave. Because that's what they do in the morning, right? Right. You yeah. Come and get a look yeah, at we them. just make just do a check and make sure. Oh, there's another yawn, Natalie. I see one. Hi. Good morning. But, but they saw Wendy and Steven was like, oh hey. When we came up and then Abby came over, this this moon of a rhino came over. It was like, no, we've got to share this with our guests. So <laughs> enjoy this amazing view of these other rhinos Hello. that are currently in the boma. Remember the boma, that African word for corral. She is just she's a giant. <laughs> I just want to I look mean, look at that. I'm going to stand here for a second. Oh. Here you go, guys. Look at this. We have some. Look at this. You guys remember how tall I am? I can't zoom out any further. You can't get any of out? No, she's so big. <laughs> so it's crazy. 
She's on a little bit of an incline, but her back is where my head is. But she's on a little bit of an incline. Yeah, I used to, in the wintertime, we give them mud baths. Uh, of course they you do. Can't, <laughs> it's too cold for them to roll around in mud holes sometimes. And uh, I used to be Abby's primary keeper okay. and trainer, and I would have to use a little step stool <laughs> to be able to get mud on her back. Yeah. You really even get close. I had to get, get a little step stool. That's amazing. Well, this is a fun little aside story. We weren't planning yeah. on filming yeah. here, but this yeah. was we too just, much fun to share. I wanted to bring this to you. It's now I, I can't even film anything. There's a else. rhino it's butt in the picture. Her. We can check out her feet. All right. Yeah, and her tail is really really cute too. You can see, so rhinos, they do have hair and they actually have really long, beautiful hair on their tail. That's long enough you could probably braid. Right, Eddie? <laughs> and they have... <laughs> what did you do this morning? <laughs> Again, what did you do this morning? So if you guys have a horse, yeah, so like anybody that has horses, rhinos are just gigantic horses. But you know, a lot of times you break your horse's tail. You don't have as much hair, but... And that really thick, tough skin. So coming up here, this is this is Natalie. Natalie. Hi, Natalie. And she's a little smaller. Yeah, she is. Um, she is an adult female as well. Abby and uh, Abby and Natalie are both adult females. Abby is 15, and <laughs> move real Natalie. Fast that was quick. That large. Yeah. And Natalie here is 30 years old. You're 30, Natalie. Yeah. So she's kind of in here with all the youngins, but her and Abby have really bonded. Yeah. Um, and so she seems very content with the, the gaggle of kids. Nice. She hangs out with, but. Um, and you can really see that. Remember, we told you last time that the horn is made of those that keratin, mm -hmm. those that's those keratin fibers, kind of hair-like. Um, and you can really see them here, as Wendy can show you. Yeah, they have hair on their horn. Yeah. So just like you can, Abby's doing much better. They groom their horn, um, kind of rub the hair and mm -hmm. compress it um, down. You can see there's big rub marks right there. Yes. And, uh, but sometimes Abby, if they don't do that, it will grow and grow and grow and be, get really long. And the babies, they're still learning their grooming yeah. habits. Hi. And so, or not the baby, they're not the baby babies, but the two-year-olds, <laughs> the other babies, the two-year-olds are still learning grooming habits, and so their their horn hair is very long. Nice. And they have this wow. big open space. Yeah, back there. And they've all crammed themselves in this over little corner with us. Well, Keeper Stacy is here, so they got to say hi to Keeper Stacy. Those big feet to spread out that weight as they walk on the grasslands of Africa and here at the zoo. They have a when nice you, mud coating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They do have a, a wallow. You can see their color of their real skin right there. Oh, good shot, Wendy. Thank you. Yep. And if you ever have the opportunity to um, maybe do one of our uh, behind the state or behind the scenes tours, uh, you can uh, touch them. We mm -hmm. let uh, guests pet them. Uh, and anyway, this area is very soft. Oh, okay, yes, cool. It is. It's very soft. I like right behind the ears. Yeah, right behind the ear is very soft too. And you can say, tell, I mean, that's one of their, as, as, as Stacy told us a little bit ago when we, when we visited with the real, the real babies, <laughs> that they love that tactile sensation. Yeah. They, that's one of their reinforcers. And they, don't, they don't grow mind. out of it. So they, don't, they don't grow out of it, yeah, as you Natalie, can see. Natalie's 30 years old and still. Likes, I, a, I likes still, a nice ride. I still love a back scratch or a back <laughs> So here we are in the back of the truck. They said it was like a, they said it was like a, a hayride for us. I was like, you know what? It really is for Wendy and me. Um, and we're going to throw some of this hay in with the rhinos. And, and Stacy's over there giving them fresh water. Here's Keeper Lane. Breakfast for the rhinos, breakfast fit for the kings. So these are the ladies we just saw close up. We've got Nandi and Bonnie, the two-year-old. They're back there, and these are the two little ones, I think. <laughs> and then... There's Abby in the Abby, middle. Abby, the very, the 5,000 pounder. Remember, you can always tell by her horn and also how large she is. Yeah, a little notched out. And then the two little ones. Here's our two young ones. Lane right working here. with one of the. Who you got there, Lane? Bonnie. This Bonnie. is Bonnie. Lane working for Bonnie. This is Abby. Hey, Abby. Hey, Abby. Hey, Bonnie. 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 Hey,
Nandi, our, our first baby rhino. Hey, Nandi. Uh, what can we do for you? Anything back here? Throw me a couple bales of hay. Okay. Here, I'll hold that. that. All right. That's fine. Don't fight. Don't fight. You had two? I will have two, yeah. All right. Look at Steve going to work. That's right. I'm going to put this one down here for you. Okay. Look at that. Whoops. Oh, many, oh. many, many moons ago. I was you can tell hay. somebody's yeah. excited. Little, uh. Yeah. Look at the adults are like. We know what's coming. Breakfast, Breakfast is, is coming. Breakfast is coming for everybody. Lane gonna toss out individual flakes. Do you guys know that? They know that. Digital gas, did you know that? I didn't know that until I started being a keeper a long, long time ago. There's a bale of hay. That's what I threw out. And in a bale of hay are individual flakes of hay. So Lane is spreading out flakes of hay to help a little bit of competition over some of the breakfast. Yeah, that makes sense. Sometimes they think somebody's got something better. Something special. Well, that's like some brothers and sisters I know. Yeah. What do you have? Oh, it's the same thing as I have. It's still better. Yeah. I want it. Yeah. Any of you guys have that, guys, digital guests? It's the exact same thing, but since you have it, I want it. It's a mammal thing. Wendy, do me a Check out the sky, guys. This is cool. Check out the sky. It's absolutely clear, Steve. Yes. And we're showing you the sky because yesterday it was not. Just to kind of give you an idea of what day we are. This is the day after Isaias came through. And you can tell by a lot of a, a lot, lot of, of rain water, a lot, of, the a lot mud. of mud, which the rhinos love. Oh, I'm sure. Look, you can tell. Look at them. They're into it. So Isaias cleared out the skies for us and gave us this beautiful day to tape the Watani grasslands with you guys, our digital guests. Yeah, yesterday we showed them Terra the Owl. And yes. we had to go inside you guys because remember? Uh, the sky opened up and it buckets did. of water came down. It was down. crazy. So we wanted to kind of give you guys an idea of just of what we're, where we are, what we're doing. And we thought it was kind of neat to share that yesterday was Owl Day. We met Terra. All Isai is coming through, dropping inches of rain in some places. Although, wasn't nearly as bad as it could have been. So yeah, I hope you lucky. guys. Lucky. What'd you have, Lane? Inch and a half at Lane's house. Those two young girls really do like to argue. They do like to have a little, have a little discussion over breakfast. I guess though, uh, people at home with tweens understand. <laughs> there you go. Here comes Stacy. She had given them fresh water over there on the other side. And the and Ma and the adults here just still yeah. like whatevs. Like, There's what? some hay. Things life is good. Yeah, the the two year olds, you know, they're they're like siblings that spat. Yep. So Teenagers. they're messing. Teenagers. Yeah, messing with each other. Still trying to see who's who. Yeah. And the adults, the adults are awesome. They're like they're 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 horn to horn over here, Wendy. They're horn to horn going. Yeah, whatevs. This is good. Yeah. How you doing? How was your night? Oh, it was okay. Brunch together. No problem. That is so cool. She is just so massive. She's if you look at them next girl. to each other, she is just so much bigger. 5,500 pounds. 5,500 pounds. Wow. And she's bigger than our male. And then next to her is our smaller rhino, Natalie. Or she's small for an adult. Yep. And uh, she is about 3,000. Oh, really? Um, well, she's about, I guess, maybe 3,800 pounds. So she's pushing two tons. So she's close, close to 4,000. I don't think she's quite 4,000, though. Gotcha. So, Stacy, we were just talking about, we were looking at the weather and saying it's just gorgeous today. And yesterday it wasn't. No. Was there any kind of special prep that you guys had to do for Isaias the storm? Or did you kind of let the rhinos, let the animals kind of deal with it? Um, so here at uh, the grasslands, we do, our animals, uh, when we have big storms, 
for this section specifically, not this isn't to speak for the whole zoo. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, but it is actually safer for I, our guys to be out. Nice, okay. Um, out of the barns and out on the big, uh, big open pasture. And so they were, they were out here. Of course, we did, you know, all the other things, you know, trying to uh, secure anything that could fly away. Yeah, okay, um, gotcha. And stuff like that. But they, they do fine um, out here on the grasslands. Yeah, it makes <laughs> sense. That's what they would do, you know, if they yeah, were anywhere else. In the wild, yeah. yeah. And it's the actually, big storm blew up. I think it's uh, great that our guys, they have to live, they live out here with the weather. Um, so it's very enriching. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, and they I love did, that. Uh, the hook stock where we were in those barns, they do have access to those barns. So yeah. if they wanted mm -hmm. to go back there, they could. Yeah, but we wouldn't lock them. We don't lock yeah. them in the barn, but they ha did have access. Um, the only species that doesn't like to get wet is uh, the Adra. So oh, real? Oh, they're a desert species. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> they hate the rain. Um, they will do everything, and so and typically they always have access to a barn. So, but most of the animals choose to be under a tree sure. or somewhere else. But the Adra, they will always be under a barn. That's funny. The Adra, are like I'm out. Yeah, as soon as it starts <laughs> to sprinkle, they're like under the porch. Like, mm, <laughs> get that know. off of me! What is this nature I touching know people me? People just like that. That's true. So, so these guys, that would be their protocol. Other animals in the zoo have different protocols. So yep. some animals might get locked inside. Some I, animals, like these guys, have access and choice. Like a kid zone, we have to be, we're paying attention to our animal ambassadors. We have two that are outside, Tara, that you guys met, and Braveheart is a hawk. Um, and we have our Galapagos tortoises that are outside. But because of the rain, because of yesterday, we brought the Galapagos tortoises inside and we kind of made sure that the weather wasn't going to be really squirrely. And we let Tara and Braveheart stay outside. They're native to North Carolina, so they're used to some of that rain. Now, if it had been a really big blow and we are worried about trees coming down, we would have crated them and taken Rocking them to another them. safe spot. Because they wouldn't, they wouldn't survive out in the wild if, they, if something were to knock right. the roof off of their home. Yep. And they were able to fly out, they wouldn't survive. Correct. And all the other sections have their own severe yeah. weather protocols. Neat. Thanks, guys. Yeah. All right, Stacy. so we're in the back of the truck. I know this isn't, this isn't exactly how you would do your morning routine here. You'd be inside the cab of the truck, I assume. Yeah. <laughs> so what is the goal right now? What is the goal in the morning? Why are you out here um, checking animals out? Uh, so our main job is to ensure the health and welfare of all of the animals okay. at, um, at Grasslands. And so part of that is just looking at them and making sure that they look healthy um, and look hey, happy. <laughs> you don't have to count them all, do you? Yeah, we count them. So, you do count well, you them have all. to also make sure that you hit, that all of the animals are still uh, are still here. Oh, well, okay, that's that important. Makes sense. All right. <laughs> that's so I guess important you need too. to count the Thompson gazelles. We yeah, should let you so count the talent. We, we count them, um, and so we have 18 Thompson gazelles, and so okay. we need to count to 18 of them. All right. Make sure they're all here. Let's let our guests count to 18. Okay. We're gonna count the Tommies. All right. Let's count the Tommies. You guys are now being keepers, digital 18. guests. Do you count them? I got 18. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Did you guys get 18 digital guests? Stacy counted them like that. I guess it comes with practice. Yeah, they can. Um, sometimes the Tommies can be difficult. Uh, we, we get up. Our target number for them is 25. Um, and then sometimes they'll kind of stretch out everywhere. And then, of course, you guys can see they look very similar. <laughs> so you're like, wait, did I count that one or not? Um, but after, you know, whenever you look very closely, all the Tommies do look a little bit different. No. Yeah. No, they don't. <laughs> they still you don't gotta look, look really close. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta look really close. That's but, pretty cool. Yeah, their horns are different, or they actually, and they have different colored ear tags. We have, just so you guys can get an idea of how, oh, they look kind of small. They're really not. Check this out. Oops. I should have taken this out of the bag. I'm gonna put you. I'm gonna put you down for a second. Look at this out. Now this is a real skull. Look at. Look. You guys recognize that guy? Yeah. Look, he's looking. He's like, what is that? He's like, what is? What do they got up there? No. So it's bigger than you think. And it's a nice sized skull. These horns are for protection, as you see. Those ridges. When they're budding with each other, the ridges kind of catch 
so they don't have to worry about impaling or spiking somebody real bad. So it's kind of neat to see how those are put together. But they're bigger than you think. When you see them out there, you're like, oh, it's a little tiny thing. Yeah, those horns next to you, like they're as broad as your chest almost. Yeah, no, they're big. Just kind of need to share that. And we talked about horns and antlers, the differences at one point. I brought a couple so you guys can see. So this is just more horns. Now these are all real. These are real animals that died naturally here at the zoo. But on the inside is the key part. So the horn is a keratin sheath wrapped around a bony core. So this sheath goes over the bone. As you can see, you can see the bone inside here and how the sheath would be slide over top of that. So that's one of the main differences between antlers and horns. Horns are this keratin around the bone. Antlers are just bone. And horns are never shed where antlers are shed every year and regrown. Remember the bison with their horns and the elk with their antlers. And these are herbivores. They're plant eaters. And you can really see that on the teeth. Those real flat, there's no cutting teeth. There's no, gr there's no killing teeth, no big canines. Just those grinding molars that you see here, nice and flat for grinding up their grasses. But I thought it's kind of neat to see the size difference because they really are bigger than you think. And now looking at them, now all of their horns do look different. They're all kind of spaced out differently, shaped a little different. Now listen to Keeper Wendy coming out Some now. are a little wonky. Yeah. Keeper Wendy yeah, coming out. I don't know if you can see, but there's one he's scratching, yeah. mm -hmm. doing a scratching, and his left horn kind of swoops out. Mm -hmm. So that's Mufalata. <laughs> so, and he's an easy one to pick out. <laughs> a lot. Of course it is. Didn't you used to have one that had um, uh, pool noodles on the end of it? Uh, yes. His name was Monty. Monty and, Crisco. Uh, yeah. And didn't he like to, uh, had a habit of trying to stab people with them? Is yeah. That when he arrived? Um, so occasionally, and it's not just for Thompson gazelles, but uh, any of the horned antelope. Well, actually, we might catch one. We have another one that who has uh, racket balls on the tips oh, of his still? horns right now. Um, we uh, couldn't get them off. They haven't fallen off. He, he came to us and with it's them. just a safety um, during shipment. So they can't, That's right. um, so they can't imp impale any of the shippers um, or other, oh. or other animals that they That's are being fair. shipped uh, with or housed. Cause these are herd species. Yeah, yeah. And so they like to stay in groups. And we try to, if they are being moved to another zoo, uh, we try to move them together so they have a buddy. Um, yeah. That's really cool that you take their their behavior and their mentality in mind even when shipping. Yeah, you don't yes. want to keep, you don't want to have a single animal who's a herd species. Yeah. yeah, it's always so. A lot of times, just like uh, potentially this fall, we might get a couple of Tommy. So we typically oh, wouldn't nice. get just one. You know, you want at least two so they have a buddy and it helps whenever if they have a buddy um, in quarantine because when they first arrive at the zoo we keep them in quarantine to make sure that they're healthy uh, to join um, the rest of the herd mm -hmm. and can handle you know they're okay so watch them for a little while and so they have a buddy when they come out and meet the new herd so they're not That's totally awesome. alone <laughs> Awesome. But yeah, so we just, they put things on the ends of their horns just for safety precautions so nobody nice. gets poked. Nobody get poked. I was just looking out on the habitat. There's pretty little purple flowers. <laughs> I just saw I them. Like, oh, that's kind of neat. Just pretty. All right, Lane, we're ready. All right, Lane. Lane's our driver today. Whoa. Let's do that. You want to tell them about that? Oh my gosh. Look at that pile of red clay that used to be the pavilion. Those of you that have been to the zoo before, remember the big, white, iconic, tent-like structure? Yeah, it's gone. How about that? Oh, look. And right, right next to it are the kudu. And all female kudu, right? Yes, we have all girls. Um... And how many do you have of them? Oh, there's a set of tonga behind them. I see a set of tonga. I see a set of tonga. So we have um, eight kudu. These are greater kudu. So they're actually the second largest antelope in the world. So they're very tall. The males are even taller and have uh, 
huge spiraling oh, they horns. Sure do. Um, but yeah, so there's I a set of tonga. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then I see one sleeping down in the shelter. So I see eight, but then we also see the elusive yeah. <laughs> set of and so she's actually um, trying to hide from us. So you saw she kind of was behind the kudu yes, herd. Was. And she was on the other side of that fence. Yeah, so she's on the uh, the cables. Uh, behind the cable so mm -hmm. well, there's actually two fences around this habitat one is a cable fence for the rhinos and that's what we see here obviously our mm -hmm. lanes approaching right now and then behind that is a chain link fence and oh, so the okay. chain link fence holds in our antelope because uh, a lot of them are able to just kind of jump right through right through the cables but it looks like that's miss toots oh, there's uh, two oh there. and there's two of them so uh we have eight Sitatunga all together as well, or ten. Um, we don't count the Sitatunga. They're not in a herd, and we don't just count them. We uh, check them off as we find them. Oh, okay. Because uh, they they don't stay in a herd. They're kind of spattered. Or, they're more singular. Yeah, and they're all over all over the habitat in the bushes. So each one of those you're identifying individually, then. Yes, oh, you okay, have to find them and and check them off. So it wow. looks like that was possibly. Miata and Toots, but we'll wow. see what Lane Lane decides they are. And Keeper Lane was telling us this is one of his favorite challenges, trying yes. to find the Citadel. Because look how well they camouflage, guys. Even as you see them, you see them running, they're, they're still pretty well hidden back there. They jumped through that fence. They sure did, like know. nothing, huh? <laughs> yeah, Lane is, he takes, um, he takes a lot of pride in finding all of the Citadel. <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah, that's either. Look at them go. Not the fastest, but they're not that scared. Yeah. Just kind of getting out of the way. They can run faster. Yeah. If they really, if they need to. So is it Toots and Sassafras? Sassafras. So. Oh that's no, okay. that's fine. I got to see them moving. We yeah. told our we told our digital guest this is one of your favorite times looking. Trying to trying to find the Sitatunga. Yeah. Getting paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> he said getting paid for it. All of this construction up here, jackhammer and banging and stuff, the Sitatunga will line up as close as they can get to it. Really? Yeah. So the construction that. doesn't scare the Sitatunga. He was telling us that they're, that, they, that they're actually kind of hang out up here, even with all those construction noises. How crazy. And two more kudu. Again, that really pretty gray color and the stripes help them blend in with their environment, even though they are such large animals. And that's sort of a warming shed for the winter. Yeah, yeah. that's our rhino, um, our rhino shelter. It's a heated shelter, so it allows um, it allows our rhinos to be out on habitat that much more through the winter. The only time that the rhinos have to come in the barn. Uh, is below 32 degrees. 32 is the cutoff. Yeah, but if it's below 45 degrees, then they have access they to that needed shelter. Oh, that's nice. It's just more choice, more choice. Later more choice. choice. So we're kind of going backwards. If you have done the Zufari experience at the North Carolina Zoo, we're kind of going backwards on that experience. And there's some construction up here. Let's see where Lane's going to stop us and He's gonna check for gonna a take a peek for Sitatunga up here. Like a, a Where's Waldo. There goes, uh, no, that was another. That's Kudu running there. Was. Yeah. It's like Hard where's to see. Where's Waldo, but in <laughs> real life. Where's Sitatunga? Now, the rhino aren't out here right now. That's correct. I haven't seen an ostrich. No, Pearl is also. Is that because of the construction? That yes. Do with that fence over here? Can you yes. get that green fence, Wendy? And that's all for Zufari, is that right? Yeah, they have built a new Zufari road and a new entrance and exit. Uh, so oh, if cool. you guys uh, have done Zufari before and coming back and doing it again, uh, it'll be a little bit different when nice. they're all done. Nobody, so, so Nobody up there this time? They can't be out here right now because ostrich is a little too curious. And rhinos would be able to knock that fence over real easily, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that's why they're in the Boma. It's nice they still have an outdoor space they can get to, though. That's, that's pretty cool. 
because everybody loves Pearl. Pearl the ostrich, if you've ever been on a safari, <laughs> you've met Pearl the ostrich. And if, she is a, she's a hoot. fan favorite. Who's, been, who's met Pearl? Give us a like. Give us a thumbs up if you have, if you've met Pearl. Is that okay? Oh, you're fine. I'm Absolutely. Not very good. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. Coming up on the fence itself. So the pond also provides wonderful habitat for a native species. A great blue heron just flew off. And this looks like an American egret or a greater egret. Bird people, help me with this one. <laughs> Definitely an egret. Beautiful bird. See them here once in a while, but they take advantage of this pond. It's a natural space, well natural. It's man-made, but we didn't want to do anything. We don't want to impact it. So there's, there's fish in there. There's turtles, frogs. I've actually seen, I was lucky enough to see an osprey once. There goes the great blue heron flying across from the upper left-hand corner. I saw an osprey catch a fish out of this pond once. That was amazing. And one time I actually saw a bald eagle out here, guys. So this really does attract some of the North Carolina native wildlife. How cool. How big is this space, Steve? This entire space is about 40 acres. And I finally did the honest to goodness math. We used to always say, it's about 40 football fields. It's about 30 American football fields in size. So 40 acres equals about 30 American football fields. So that's how much space the rhinos and the antelope and pearl when she's out here and the native wildlife get to roam. 40 acres. And you can just look at the expansive view that Wendy's able to share with you on that video, on that show, on that shot. It is amazing space. And as Keeper Stacy was telling us, the animals might just ignore some of their grains sometimes because of all this other food. Behind that cabled fence that Wendy's showing you there, is space that the Sitatunga like to hang out in. There's even more space back there on top of the 40 acres that the animals can take advantage of. So it's just a beautifully large space with varied habitats, with different types of places for the animals to hang out in. Remember, Stacy even told us that there's a pile of sand out here for the Adra to kind of get their little bit of daily sandness in as well. 40 acres covers as makes up the Watani grasslands habitat at the North Carolina Zoo. All the trees provide natural shade. You want to make sure you provide that here in North Carolina summers. Things for the animals to hide under, rub on, separate from other animals with. The Thompson's gazelles there. The Tommies. Don't tell anybody, but they're my favorite. Yeah, Shh. Got some friends from the north right here. Got some friends from the north. All right, guys. Here's a little. Here's a little. Here's a little something. Something. These are not Canadian geese. These are Canada geese. And they are not supposed to be here. And they love it here. However. So there's our new. So let's talk, we can talk about the orange for a second, Lane. Oh, you see the little one running? There's Another of our species here are the fringe-eared orits, yeah. and um, there are 13. Okay. And right in front, that you includes the baby. baby. Or 12. There's one down here as well. Yeah. They they just had a new baby, and then we also um, have pulled some boys off, so their numbers have recently changed. I bet that's a, I bet that's. <laughs> are they 12? Do we have? There's 12. Okay, yes. So there's 12. <laughs> Don't worry, That's why you else. have helpers. That's why you yeah. have assistants and it keepers takes, and other buddies. It takes a team. It yeah. does take a team. <laughs> okay. okay. So Lane's going to go walk our thicket area. Like Steve uh, was saying, we have tons of, of different types of habitat on the 40 acres for our different species. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he's going to go walk along a creek. Um, Bye, Lane. Yeah. 
and it's uh, <laughs> really thickly wooded it with sure bushes. Is. And so we call it the thicket. And the sit like hang out in there. I love it. I've lost a baby already. So if people come on the Zufari ride, when they're looking, they should look in that look Absolutely. into that thicket. Yep. It's hard to find them, guys. I tell you what, I'm lucky enough to be able to do that Zufari experience every once in a while. And I see Sitatunga probably every third or fourth experience. I don't see them all the time. You gotta really look for them. Oh, Steve, what? I have spotted something. What'd you see? I have spotted the, the baby? elusive saw the baby. white crane. We saw, it. no, it was the egret. We the saw girl, an egret. Look. No, it was an egret. Look, it's the elusive it egret. white crane in the sky. Really? <laughs> Really? I mean, it just looks weird because I've never. I, it's above the trees. You I saw a to. crane, right. not an egret, and it's the real crane. <laughs> that's take. That might be putting up some the of the baboon work. It's a crane. I Your observation skills are over the, the top. White crane. I know. Your I observation skills. You should have been, been a wildlife biologist. You should have been. Oh, Wendy, <laughs> great observation, Wendy. Actually, it is kind of neat. Because when Pavilion came down, you can see them still working on Pavilion. Oh, there goes the bird. Oh, there goes the, the actual, well, it's not a egret. There goes the egret, not the crane. <laughs> hey, it's going towards the crane. <laughs> the egret and crane coming together. So you can see all the work going on in Pavilion still. And then along with that work, we're putting together a new baboon habitat. And that's going to be really cool. It's going to give you an opportunity to see baboon year round. And even in the wintertime, there'll be an indoor space for them to go, but a place that you can still see them when you come to the zoo in the wintertime. That's a species we'd really like to do a zoo adventures on. But right now they're not on habitat because they were, they're doing the construction up here. Yeah, I drove past, I saw some of the uh, progress they've made with baboon mm -hmm. holding and it is very large. Yeah. So from, uh, I was glad to see that our baboons will have lots of space. Nice. Space too. So even our new our new buildings and um, our renovations still trying to give everybody a lot of space. Kind of keep that tradition of space. Yeah, because I was excited. I was excited for the baboons. <laughs> I was like, wow, look at that. That's cool. No, that's awesome. That we're always constantly aware of that kind of criteria here at North Carolina Zoo. Where big is better. When you can do that, some animals don't need huge spaces. Mm -hmm. But the animals, when you can do it, it's nice to be able to provide that opportunity. And there are, you can uh, talk about the USDA and AZA, how all animals have a minimum criteria. Yep. And just because there's a minimum doesn't mean you can't That's go where above you stop. and beyond That's that. That's a great point, Wendy, yeah. Because there are minimum criteria for everybody. The USDA, uh, who inspects us. Um, do you guys know that? Not just the American Zoological Association, but the USDA also inspects the zoo to make sure that all, that all the habitats and all the back areas are up to, up to par. So we're getting inspected continually by agencies and we have to be up to par. We have to be up to snuff with those. So the keepers have to be aware of that. They've got to make sure all, all, their, all their medications are not expired. Make sure that hay is dry and water is clean. Foodstuffs are kept safe. What else do you guys have to do for the, for the inspection, Stacy? I know I'm probably just talking to some of them, but. Um, we also, they also inspect our training and enrichment oh, logs. Really? Uh, so we have to record, uh, that's for AZA, um, mm -hmm. USDA, they only check for primates, but uh, here the uh, AZA standard is all species. Wow, okay. Um, but that is another thing that we keep a uh, close record of and, and uh, they'll look to make sure Make sure that we are doing our daily training and enrichment. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have to assess our welfare sure. as well. So uh, we have groups all across park and we uh, make sure that our animals welfare is as good as we can make it and um, always looking to improve if we can. And we keep record of all this and they come and look through it. And, and don't we actually, we also do that internally, right? We have teams that will mm -hmm. go to other sections and to look at their welfare and look at their records and make sure everything is kind of in good shape, look at the habitats, make sure everything is in good shape? Yeah, uh, so at the grasslands, um, one of my fellow keepers, Tamara Troll, mm -hmm. uh, and you guys might meet her at some point, she trains the kudu. Um, oh, that's right, I think we are gonna to try to meet her. But uh, she, 
uh, on Sunday has, uh, it's on the calendar, 11 a.m. Invert, invertebrates welfare check. So we even check on our bugs wow. <laughs> to make sure we're taking good care of our bugs and their welfare is good as well. That's so cool. So. And it's neat that the staff kind of goes around, looks at other sections as well to keep it internal, kind of keep it friendlier so you know who's coming around. Look, but it's another set of eyes yeah, fresh looking at that habitat, looking at what you're doing. So I think that's kind of neat. And yeah. It's, a, it's accountability. Account well said. Yeah, it's perfect. Glad you said it. If you didn't hear, she said it's accountability. It's making sure that you're accountable to yourself, to your colleagues, and to the animals that are under your and care. And it's happening all the time, not just for an inspection. So it's happening yes. 365 days and that's not a great just that point. one day that we're being inspected. Yeah, that's a great yes. point. Because you, when, you know, when you're being inspected, you know it. Yes. Now, sometimes you get a little pop-up inspection, but you know it. So you can prep for it. But day, if you do it, if you're always ready for inspection, that puts you in position to be ready for the next inspection. I love Tell it. The great job. Running. Yep. So the oryx, I don't know if they, they're probably a little bit off in the distance from here, uh, but the fringeared oh, oryx the herds, in yeah, is in the back. And they Look the baby run, Wendy. I don't know if you can catch that. Look, she's in the back. Watch it. Here she comes right in front of you. Shoo. Zoom. <laughs> so she uh, just recently got up with the herd um, and now, because she's fast enough. Yeah. Just like Steve said, she can run and keep up with the herd. Uh, but at first they can't and so they actually tuck them and hide them they tuck them what's that mean so they tuck them in the grass uh -huh. or under a bush uh just somewhere where you cannot see them and you see the grass in front of us you think oh if a baby oryx was laying <laughs> down there you would be able to see it no problem no no you don't you <laughs> walk like a rock i'm sure <laughs> yeah, too you'll walk past them a million times um so it's That's pretty crazy. incredible how hidden they are just by tucking up so they'll kind of curl up in a ball like a cat does on okay. the back of the couch and they lay like that and mom comes um, to check uh, periodically but she's very careful she doesn't want to give it away to any predators sure um, and then white-tailed deer here in North Carolina actually tuck their babies the same thing until they're strong enough to run and keep up with mom oh, um, so okay. if you guys have ever I'm sure uh, there's information about it with our wildlife rehab mm -hmm. and stuff. So if you do find a, a tiny baby deer in the woods that you think is abandoned, you well, want to wait, give it some time, because the baby's probably just tucked and mom is going to come back. Yeah, that's what Hallie says all the time. Hallie runs our, is in charge of our wildlife rehabilitation center here at the zoo. We do have one. Uh, Hallie always says it all the time. She says, if you find a baby white-tailed deer that looks lost, that looks mm -hmm. abandoned, it is 99% sure not. Mom has probably gone off to feed, will come back to nurse later on. Yep, exactly. And, so, and they'll do that. It just depends on the species and a little okay. bit on the individual, how oh, really? long it takes them to be strong and uh, able to get up and, and run with the herd. So, But uh, the oryx are very, very good at tucking and hiding <laughs> their babies. So as keepers, we still want to get eyes on that baby and make sure, sure it is okay. And it can be very difficult to find them sometimes. I bet. Uh, especially when in the middle of summer when everything's, you know, very lush. <laughs> lush and thick and there's lots of hiding opportunities. It's great for them, right? Yeah, it's great for them, not good for us always. That's uh, awesome. But the kudu, since it, the other species will sometimes give the babies away, which is always a good time. <laughs> so they'll be walking by and they'll stop and look and they'll stare for a while. And you're like, oh, is that? yeah, the greater kudu are the worst about it. <laughs> so anytime there's something strange, or not strange, but just something new, new or different in the habitat, they will all gather and stare. And so you so know, don't play, oh. hide, don't play hide and seek with a kudu. Yeah, yeah, don't play exactly. Hide and seek with they a kudu. Will, They're they going to give you away. They will give you away. <laughs> Absolutely. That's awesome. Good stuff, Stacy. Thank you so much. All right, Stacy. so we've seen most everything on the habitat. You've kind of, you're kind of finishing up your morning routine. What, are these the barns we saw a minute ago when we were with the bongo and the adra? Yes, so the, this are, these are the gates into okay. the barns where we poured grain at first thing, first thing this morning. Mm -hmm. And so they are a little bit hidden. Yeah, uh, there's are. trees and, and bushes planted yeah. along the fence line, uh, but there are three gates. For the antelope. Well, there's to, three. I didn't know that actually. Uh, for the antelope to come into, and uh, Lane, I think he's getting ready. He'll. Oh. April. April. 
So I don't know wow. if you guys saw that, I, but we had no idea there was a Sinatunga no, right there. We didn't. <laughs> to that show you crazy. how camouflaged they are. Wow, here we are uh, talking about like, barns. I was and... like, why are we going up what, to the Where's fence? Lane going? I am going to go up there. I'll push the water buck out and get the water buck. Okay, cool. And a kudu might be up there too. So we got April. I counted the kudu. The kudu were. Oh, I don't know where, but yeah, I don't know where the kudu went now. Uh, so. <clears throat> Yeah, so April Sitatunga was hiding in the in the brush, and she it ran out. So we'll check her off. It's all April. <laughs> we did used to have like 20 Sitatunga out here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got our largest. It was like uh, 25. Like this one. Oh, yeah, there is another one. So that could possibly be Zawadi. There's one individual. Her name is Zawadi, and she's excellent, excellent at hiding um, and running from us. And so, uh, I don't think Lane has seen her yet. Yeah, we oh, just saw, there goes one Lane. There goes one. I, I don't have any binoculars. That was Zawadi. And we saw somebody, you saw somebody else run across the habitat? So we've had three since, since, uh, since you pulled up. Yeah. I feel like a keeper. <laughs> we're, we're finding them. <laughs> We found a Sinatunga. <laughs> so as far as like the keeper world, our region okay, yeah, yeah, sorry. is a little bit different than um, like the rhino barns, like some parts of this section is that routine where, you know, you, you shift your your animals into their holding and you get habitat ready. Yeah, yeah. And then you shift them back on habitat for the day. Uh, but here they're always out and about. And so we're just like driving around. <laughs> like looking. Yeah, see who's where, where they are, what's yeah, going on. Yeah, we're just like checking on them and... Um, we're not throwing any food, so a big part of being oh. a zookeeper is feeding, of course, feeding the animals. Sure. Uh, but, uh, like you guys were Why wouldn't you do that? Uh, well, there is lots of food out here for them. All of the animals on the oh, Watani grassland. Oh, we were talking about that, weren't we? Okay, yeah, I get it. Yeah, you guys huh. were hitting on that. Ding. So they're all herbivores, and so right in the summertime, there's lots of grass yeah, and yeah. leaves okay. growing, and that's pretty much what they eat. That's so funny. You supplement more in the winter? Yes, in the winter, you know, in North Carolina, um, you know, the grass kind of goes dormant and mm -hmm. our trees lose their leaves and go dormant. And so in the winter time, there's not as much food. Sure. And so uh, they uh, get hay and grain. Uh, but there are a lot of um, browse that are green through the winter. So Iliagnus, bamboo, um, let's see, what else? Yep, so those two. <laughs> is it mulberry? Does mulberry grow in this winter? Um, no, mulberry, we have to, it'll be gone uh, by the first frost. Okay. So, and, but the Iliagnus and bamboo, I think giant reed. So any of the, um, a lot of plants that do stay green through the winter, we'll cut and feed them. Nice. Uh, and then, and if you do any training, then you would use treats for training. Yeah, so for the antelope training, they do uh, like some produce. Oh. Yeah. oh, here comes the kudu again. Wow. Oh, here comes a water buck. No, that's, the, that's a Frangiodorix. Yes, that's uh, that's Brisket is her name. Hi, Brisket. And she's kind of a special individual. So the rest of the Oryx herd has kind of stayed together and tight. Yeah, they have. Uh, but Oryx, I mean, but Oryx, but Brisket is, um, she's very bold and confident. She was... Uh, the she was our last matriarch's daughter so oh let me so she kind of has that dominance yeah she was born to the matriarch and then stayed in the barn she was born in the winter and she stayed in the barn the whole time and so she became very comfortable with the barns and comfortable with us okay um and then since her mother um has passed away she was uh, older Oryx and Brisket was her last baby and so we think Brisket might be the matriarch but she's so strange <laughs> so it's like because usually the matriarch leads the herd yeah. and stays with them and you see so Brisket is here and the herd is way, way over way. there so they're staying um, away from the boss is what they're doing yeah, they're, they're staying away from the boss so it's kind of tricky uh, it's kind of what Wendy have done Wendy and I have done with Beth yeah they stayed away from the boss but it took a worldwide pandemic oh here comes the water buck one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 
14 and a kudu. And a kudu. <laughs> I was going to say, wait, we have 14 water buck, not 15. Um, but there's a kudu that's got mixed up with them. What are you doing in there, kudu? <laughs> uh, so 15, I mean, not, no, no, I think I, we have 15 water bucks. 14 in one. 14 water buck. So now, guys, digital guests, you've just become a keeper. You were on Watani Grasslands. You were counting the water buck just like what happens with the morning routine here in Watani Grasslands with Keeper Stacy and Keeper Lane. And you didn't have to clean a barn. You didn't have to hose anything. You didn't have to get poop on your shoes. What a wonderful day. That's right. That's awesome. So the water buck there, uh, I don't know if we mentioned, so we saw the Tommies earlier and counted them and they were all boys, mm -hmm. are known as a bachelor herd. And the water buck are all boys and known, or they're a bachelor herd as, as well. well. Mm -hmm. I love their little white toilet seat butts. Yep. Like they sit on a freshly painted toilet That's seat. That's right. They have a little ring. Yeah, they were a bit spooky. They heard me out here. They wouldn't come out the other way. Oh. They didn't want to come out because they heard us. Yeah, so they, it is t totally natural antelope, again, the prey species, and so they're all on high alert for predators. Yeah. And Any we, weird noises. Yeah. And Winnie and I are a little strange. Yeah. I mean, you're right. scary on strange. We make a good team. <laughs> We're SS. If you farted, that'll really keep you from coming. <laughs> so how many Sinatunga do we need? Four. Okay, four. Ziggy. What an amazing day. It's just gorgeous out here today. Right. Beautiful sky, beautiful habitat, beautiful animals. And we got to share the morning routine of Watani grasslands with you. It's awesome having Keeper Stacy. Actually, we're leaving now. Keeper Stacy's going to be closing gates for us back here as, as we lean. Leave Keeper, Keeper Lane is driving us out. But what an amazing experience. I hope you guys truly enjoyed the morning routine, getting to see how things are happening, learning a little bit different information. We try to take you in behind the scenes, and today we went again behind behind the scenes yeah. uh, and show you places that even Wendy and I haven't been before. Uh, so it's neat to be able to share those with you as well. And the baby rhinos, come on, really? Oh. That's amazing. Oh. <laughs> really good stuff. So thank you guys so much for tuning in again today. This is Zoo Adventures. You're every Monday and Wednesday coming at you. Obviously this one was taped, as we've said a few times throughout the way. Um, so we'll be back with you again soon. Y'all stay safe. Um, I'm glad that the zoo is open, that you guys can still come and check us out. Remember those time tickets, though and check those online registrations to get your spot reserved early. So we'll see you again soon from Zoo Adventures, Steve in front, Wendy behind. Have a great day, and again, stay safe.